We're ready to go. Saw some Instagram stories over the off season. <laughs> oh gosh. Doing some ice fishing. Yeah. We did some fishing, went on some road trips. A buddy of mine was singing along to the radio like the whole ride. It was awesome. We had a great time. Is that friend of yours a good dude to take road trips with? Absolutely. He's my best friend uh, back home and he's done plenty of uh, you know road trips to go fishing before. He always keeps it fun in the uh, in the car. Speaking of Chad, the man to take the road trips with, you can't escape Chad. Hey buddy, how's it going? From your hometown in beautiful Ladner, British Columbia, it's time to go on another road trip. Here we go, buddy. <laughs> That's awesome. He's got his dog with him. So do you think that he does this like all the time in the car? Oh, no totally. matter what? I think he does it when he's by himself all the time. The dude is a legend. <laughs> oh gosh. Like I don't know Chad that well, but I want to. And I think everybody who watches this wants to be best friends with your best friend. That's awesome. <laughs> How did you get this video? I saw the Instagram stories and right away I was like, oh man, I gotta get in touch with this oh, guy. Oh my, it's <laughs> awesome. <laughs> What's the longest trip that you've done with your boys? Outside of baseball, longest one was probably this off season. We drove like five hours, I want to say, from uh, Seattle to Idaho. We caught some sturgeon. The one that we got the picture with was uh, six feet, mm -hmm. and we got to beach that one, put on the waders, went out, took a picture. Uh, the biggest one that we caught, I don't know how we did it, we snagged it on the tail. And uh, it took us like 45 minutes to bring it in because, you know, when you catch it on the tail, they can just take off. So this thing was just fighting and fighting. We had to pass the rod off a few times because it was just, they're heavy, right? Uh -huh. They fight so hard. About 45 minutes later, it comes in belly up because it's like so tired. Mm -hmm. We didn't get it in to, uh, to take a picture and stuff like that because it was caught on the tail. We couldn't drag it to the beach, but it was definitely bigger than the six footer we caught. We were guessing it was around eight feet because wow. it was gigantic. Maple leaf tattoo on your forearm. When did you get that, and did you know that that was the tattoo that you were going to get on your arm? Well, I got it in, I think it was 2013. I had always wanted to get a tattoo. I just didn't know what of. And I saw a tattoo online where someone had this like same tattoo, but they had a different picture on the inside. And I kind of came up with the idea of getting the same thing, but getting the picture that kind of meant something to me on the inside. So on the inside here is uh, just kind of like a you know, scenic photo of, uh, this is Boyer Island right here. And it's uh, where my family has a cabin. Mm -hmm. Actually, my, my grandfather bought it back in the day and uh, he's passed away now, but they still belongs to the family and they split it up. There's five siblings, they split it up. They each get two weeks in the summer. Mm -hmm. um, I spent a lot of time there as a kid. Got to hang out with my family, my grandpa, my cousins. So we just had a great time there. It just reminds me of family and kind of where I'm from. It sounds like you knew that when you would be getting a tattoo, then, then that would be the one that you'd be getting. Yeah, I wanted to get something that meant something to me and felt like I finally figured it out. So I went in and kind of showed them some pictures of what I wanted and they put it together for me and it was, it was great. And that added to your nickname. It did, yeah, that, that came a few years later. Um, one of my coaches, Tim Bogar, told me that I needed a nickname and uh, he, he said, oh, why not Big Maple? And he must have told our head coach because he said it in an interview after a game and it just, it took off. Mm -hmm. And uh, people were uh, calling me Big Maple from then on. Do you have any other ones? I don't have any other ones right now. Um, I have been planning on getting another tattoo. Uh, I just haven't got around to doing it yet. For some reason, my off seasons just, just fill up. But I do want to do, I want to finish off this arm. I want to do a uh, Arbutus tree going up my uh, my shoulder here because my grandparents on the other side of my family have this cabin on Saturna Island and they have Arbutus trees that grow all around their property. So I kind of wanted to do something for you know both sides of the family and you know, that would be, I think, a good one to kind of go up my arm and then on the top of my shoulder, I want to do like a mandala uh, just to kind of like, kind of a zen piece because I kind of feel like that's kind of who I am as a person, like pretty relaxed. So I thought that would be a good good piece to get up there. And then I've had people tell me I need to get something to do with the eagle put on me too, so. Oh yeah! We'll see, the uh, eagle. We'll see how, how I can fit that in. Yeah, now would you put the eagle tattoo on the area that like it came near you? I think so. If I was gonna do it, I'd probably do it on like my shoulder back here where it landed. Yeah. I don't know what I would do. I'm trying to figure that out if I'd put like a 
try and do like a thing of an eagle like coming in at me and have it kind of looking back so you can see like the beak or something like that. Yeah, we'll see. I'll have to get some maybe pictures drawn up of that so I can get some get some better ideas. Dude, that is a great idea. Yeah, It'd be a conversation starter for sure. And uh, man, I had so many conversations about that eagle. It was funny. Everyone wanted to know how the heck I didn't run away or swat at it or something like that. I really didn't want to swat at it or anything because I figured if I, you know, swatted at the symbol of America, I might get deported. So it was like, you know, no, no chance. Might have somebody coming after you. I'm just, I'm just gonna wear it. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks like you knew exactly what to do. Like it was like super calm. Yeah. For some reason, I just wasn't really that scared. You know, I, I don't know. I can't explain it. Really, it just for some reason I wasn't. Uh, I wasn't super afraid. And when you were out in Seattle, you had the Maple Grove, which was your cheering section. Yeah, yeah, that was awesome. Those people were a lot of fun. I actually uh, got a chance to meet them. They brought uh, the group of them that kind of started it uh, down to the, the field, and I gave them some, uh, some maple bars. And we got to take a picture with the tree they put out there, met those people, really cool people. I'm just, it's, it's fun that, uh, you know, a game can bring together a group of people that didn't know each other previously, I don't think. Some of them did, but not all of them. It's great that they're having fun and cheering me on. I really appreciated, you know, their support out there. Soon after you became a Yankee, mm -hmm. Elm Street Donner up in Stanford, like a huge Yes Network favorite. Yeah. They made that uh, Big Maple, the stack of pancakes with the... Oh, yeah maple in between the maple bacon that looked like a lot of food yeah that probably would make me sick <laughs> <laughs> how many people you think would have to uh pitch in to take that down oh my gosh i would say at least four or five <laughs> six people something like that because that looked like a lot of food holy smokes and all the maple syrup yeah and all the maple syrup holy smokes that'd be enough calories for about a week i think <laughs> you took that down by yourself an off day, you know how to spend those. One time you had gone to the baseball game. Oh yeah. That was mm -hmm. the San Francisco Giants, correct? Yep, so we were in town playing Oakland. My wife was with me and we had an off day. We thought it would be fun to go to a game together uh, because you know, it's been forever. Usually she's just there by herself watching me. It was really cool to go and be a regular guy, watch a game uh, with my wife and I got to explain a few things to her and uh, just kind of take it in. It, it was a lot of fun, we, we really enjoyed it. Uh, you know, had a beer and a hot dog, enjoyed the game. I got a really cool vantage point for the game. Mm -hmm. Have that nice view there and it was great. I think my wife really enjoyed having me with her too. She's usually by herself. So no kids, but yeah. you do have a very, very cute dog. <laughs> yeah, we picked up a puppy, name is Duke. Um, he's awesome, man. It's, it's a lot of work. I haven't had a puppy before, uh, even, neither has my wife. So it's, uh, it's definitely been an experience, but we've enjoyed it. He's uh, super cute. He's a miniature golden doodle. He's super friendly and hypoallergenic. Yes, he doesn't shed very much. Like a little bit, but very little. How'd you come up with the name Duke? His name was Ike, actually, when we first went and looked at him, which we kind of liked. But before we had found out that his name was Ike, we had decided on Duke, and we really like Duke. We've got a few different nicknames for him now. We like calling him Buzz. We were thinking we should have called him Buzz. We call him Buzz quite a bit. <laughs> My wife's got him all over Instagram. All right, yeah. she knows what's up. She knows what's up. She's, she's huge on Instagram. She loves posting little videos of him every day and stuff like that. I post here and there. I don't really have that strong of a social media game, but I'm trying to throw out a few more things here and there. The fishing helped this off season. I got to throw out a few posts about fishing. People always like seeing stuff like that. Anything off the field I feel like. Yeah. What would you say is the one thing that you're looking forward to most about experiencing New York, experiencing the East Coast, because you've never been right. on the East Coast or lived on the East Coast, really, so. Yeah. I think for me, it's the fans at the stadium and how passionate they are. I love it when you know, I'm playing in a game, home or road, really. It doesn't matter if they're cheering for me or not. Just like the, uh, the energy. I love the energy in the stadium when people are fired up and passionate about the game it just it makes it so much fun that's one thing that i think new york is going to bring more than anywhere else is just these passionate good baseball fans i hope that uh we can win number 28 while i'm here that'd be awesome <laughs>